Everyone, welcome to the Unfiltered Podcast. My name is Lee Stevenson, and I have the privilege to be the uh, lead pastor of a church plant in Orlando, Florida, Harvest Community Church, and also serve the Greater Converge Movement as the executive director of church planting. And my co-host here, I'll let him introduce himself. I'm Danny Parmalee, and I oversee church planting for Converge Mid-America. And uh, Danny, we are now at the point where we are about uh, six to eight weeks in with the time of this recording of kind of the coronavirus COVID-19 um, culture shift. I don't know how else to kind of describe it, but life um, has definitely been different than any of us expected 2020 to be at this point. And so we're going to do a series of podcasts here, just kind of talking about what have we learned? What are we seeing? What are we sensing? for the future of the church. And specifically today, um, we want to take some time in this podcast just to talk about lessons learned um, when it comes to virtual church and uh, what we're seeing, um, you know, in the, the church world today. Yeah, Lee, I'd love for you to even kind of uh, start out um, with you sharing some of the things because your boots on the ground and uh, maybe even just to share a little bit of your experience um, just even the emotional, like, okay, you know, the excitement, the fear, and then kind of where you're at now, this number of weeks in, and then uh, go to some of those practical things that you learned along the way. Yeah, that's, that's great. We're, uh, to kind of put it in context right now, we're about 18 months old as a church plan. So this hit us uniquely. The, the good thing is I think we were already having conversations about what is online church, uh, look like and how do we maximize that beyond just hey let's just record our services and post it on youtube or post on facebook um and uh and so i feel like that put us a little bit ahead of the curve that we were already working on on instrumental pieces but i think it it just forced our hand as it did every church in america to all of a sudden figure this out a little bit and i i think some of the the things we've learned very quickly um is your quality of equipment does matter um, when it comes to the recording and the sound quality and how that gets viewed. Um, I think when things are on a screen, we uh, we have a tendency to be almost minuscule when it comes to the critiques of, of what we see and what we do to improve that. And so I think we do have to pay attention as a, as a, as a, as a pastor and, or as staff people on a church to the overall quality that we're putting out there. And it's not a, it's not a performance base. It's literally how do we keep people mo- engaged um, with uh, the service experience so that people are maximizing that experience in the home setting. Um, and that's, that's hard. Mm-hmm. Um, can you even just, uh, if you can just even briefly share when you say, uh, equipment, even give some really specific, because I know for some church planners, it's like, man, everything costs money and the money's not necessarily yeah. flowing in right now. Um, what what are we talking about ballpark here and, you know, difference between a whatever $50 mic and whatever the next level up is? Sure, sure. Let me, let me talk from the standpoint of kind of what our current setup is and uh, why we've done what we've done. Um, first of all, we do a two camera lockdown. Um, so we do one camera is a tight lockdown shot. Um, and it's, you know, mainly my waist up Mm -hmm. and it's, it just gives us a real focused view. The second camera, a focused view of your abs. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. yeah. Well, I try not to show my abs (laughs) while I'm preaching. So, but yeah. Um, and, uh, then we do a wide angle view, which I preach next to a TV screen. So we've got about a, a 60 inch TV screen on a stand next to me. And I, I stand real close to it and, and I stand, I don't put a tabletop um, or anything like that in front of me. So it, it I, I want to keep as direct connection as possible with the audience that are viewing from the camera. And so anytime I read a passage or make a point, I'll point to the screen and that automatically we go to wide angle there. Um, we're we're using Sling Studio mm. as kind of the um, the brains behind managing the camera and recording. And I got to say, like for the money you spend, it's probably the best 
um, system out there. Uh, I think to get the full package Sling Studio, you're looking at maybe fifteen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, the way it operates, you can set up your cameras, literally run it from an iPad, and you can just literally toggle between this camera and this camera by hitting a box on your iPad and uh, super, super smooth. Um, and then we run the sound through that as well, but through our soundboard. So we're mixing the sound um, as we're getting the camera um, shots, which really knocks down the, the, the amount of editing time that is required to get a quality um, put out there. So I preach with a, a um, headset mic um, and we use a sure brand just like any church would use, but just run it straight through our soundboard into the sync studio. Um, and so you're, you're looking at anywhere between 500 to a thousand dollars for a, a really quality mic to be able to mic and get good quality sound with that. Uh, and then, um, the TV costs and the camera costs. The other piece I would say is very important to pay attention to that. I think, um, I've noticed as I watched, uh, other churches um, post their recordings of their services and stuff are, is lighting. Lighting really, really matters. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, um, we've got a floor lamp. We do backlighting. And then we have two um, LED lights on stands that uh, really try to knock down all the shadows. And um, um, it, but one of the things that we learned um, probably two weeks into this uh, when you're doing the tight shot is you really have to dial in the um, the, the the coloring or the, the lighting gauges on your cameras to give an accurate look, you know, so your skin's not too yellow or too mm-hmm. orange or too dark um, when it comes to how that gets carried over to the screen. And so you, you really do, once you get it dialed in though, you should be, you should be set. Um, the other thing we do is I, I preach from a teleprompter when I'm looking at, at the close angle camera. Um, and we took that cue from the, um, uh, just from newscast. So, so there's a reason why you're, you know, when you watch the news that they're talking to a teleprompter is because they're able to maintain constant eye contact with the camera. Mm-hmm. And that keeps people engaged differently than if you're looking down to your notes or you're looking off to your side on a, at a regular, you know, on a regular basis. And so, um, but the key with the teleprompter is you need just the right amount of distance. So your eyes aren't tracked in the camera like you're, you're reading and stuff of, of that sort. But then when you go wide angle, you're, you're now speaking to a different camera. So you've got to be okay flexing, going from teleprompter to non-teleprompter and back and figuring out the rhythm of, of doing that. And, and that's been helpful for us. All right, great. I want to actually go back. Sling Studio, you said is $1,500 for the full package. Now, are you talking, because I've heard a number of guys using Sling Studio, loving it, that... Um, you're talking about just the software because it is just a ver- it's a, a digital switcher, right? Or are you talking about actual hardware equipment that they also there? Send there in? is a little bit, yeah. There is a little bit of hardware equipment that comes with that. It is mainly okay. software driven, but there is a there is like a little hardware interface um, okay. that it actually um, you know plugs into that you could plug your soundboard into and stuff mm-hmm. of that sort like in the back of the room and and i've heard i mean i am talking small church plants um being able to use this without huge tech people and tech team and that you can literally use your iPhones and iPads so even if you didn't have hugely expensive hd cameras by using uh, their, the, the hardware that they send and then the software basically doing the switcher that, like you said, all of the editing is done right there, basically on the iPad live, yeah, uh, so live. to speak. And then, and then obviously can convert to a actual recording thing that for the money, I mean, you can look pretty professional. Uh, to you really to can. Do that, so, yeah, you really, really can. And, and that's why I would recommend like, I think that's a worthwhile investment for mm-hmm. any small, medium sized church. Um, I know even large churches that that's their predominant thing that they, they utilize because it is so easy and it works. It's Wi Fi. Um, you can literally, and, and we've done this. So, like for the worship set, because you want a little bit of a different feel on the worship, um, we'll set up um, uh, iPhones, just like you said, at an interface um, 
you know, through Wi-Fi with the Sling Studio. So you can set up as many cameras as you want. You can set up four or five still camera shots and just literally toggle between them um, and and use the phone that you use as a daily, you know, as your daily cell phone as, as well. So it, it's pretty remarkable. The other thing that we're, we're learning is, how, and I think this is a struggle every church has, is how do you how do you create a worship experience that is engaging where people don't want to just sit on the couch and watch mm-hmm. some people play music, but they actually want to sing and they participate, which again, I, it's awkward even for us, you know, when we're in our house, yeah. home trying to sing and have the whole family together. But I've just, we've learned in watching churches also that, have, that figure this out, the closer that you can get the camera connection with the person's face and mm-hmm. eyes, the more engaging it is. Yeah. Um, and so in other words, personalize the worship experience. If it's just a distant shot the entire time, it's going to be a lot less engaging. But for some reason, it's like when you see somebody's eyes in the midst of worship, it has a way of drawing you into worship as well. That's great. I want to actually go back and then come back to this worship question. You mentioned teleprompter. Um, what are we looking at cost wise and what do you mean by teleprompter? Yeah. So the teleprompter we've got set up, the camera sits behind the screen and you can, you, you know, we, uh, we set up on a tripod just like you would any camera set up. Um, and you just plug in a laptop and it mirrors it onto a, a see-through screen. So you don't actually see the camera lens, but you're speaking right at the camera lens mm-hmm. um, as as you read it. Now we have to have a. You can preset the speed, but the reality is I've learned that um, you, you you know you have a cadence, and so you can't just set the speed and just go. So it's good to have somebody that kind of follows along with you and and yeah. um, is running the laptop live while you're, while you're kind of going through the teleprompter. There are a lot of good teleprompters out there. I'd say anywhere. Um, from about uh, the cheapest you're probably going to want to go is probably $650, $700 mm-hmm. up to about $1,100. You can get a really quality teleprompter uh, to make your job a whole lot easier. That's great. All right, going back to the worship experience, how many songs are you doing? I'm I'm guessing that you're either shortening them, e- you know, each song, doing less amount of songs. How how are yeah. you personally and what are you kind of seeing as far as like, man, this is what needs to be different. We can't just translate and plop. This is what we did live. So let's just now the only difference is it's video. Yeah, we we uh, we really try hard to keep our services around the 45 minute mark total time length. Mm-hmm. Um, max will do is, is maybe 50 minutes, mm-hmm. um, which typically we find about two songs typically is the right flavor. So we'll do a a welcome and intro with a host um, type of role right at the beginning. We'll have a countdown because again, um, people tend to tune in at different times, just as they do walk into a service at different times. So we do a five minute countdown um, and we actually start that three minutes before the, the typical service time. And so it actually gives us a two minute buffer. Mm-hmm. Um, so like say at nine thirty service time, we start the, the five minute bumper at nine twenty seven service officially starts then at, at 9 32 with a quick host role welcome everybody to you know our church online mm-hmm. experience and then um, kind of have a prayer moment and then go into the worship and then we will have two songs of worship and then we'll create a bumper that goes from the worship into the sermon and then we have the sermon and then we'll exit out of the sermon usually just straight into a host role now if we if it happens to be we've done communion once since then, um, we add a little bit extra music into the communion and just cut the the message down. But we find participation falls off pretty quickly um, if you get over the 25 minute um, mm-hmm. speaking um, standpoint. And so we we intentionally aim for around 25 to 28 minutes on the sermon length, um, knowing if we go longer than that, people are going to disengage with the service. Depends on how good of a preacher you are. I mean. If I was if I was doing that, I mean, I'd go for, I'd go forty five minutes to an hour. <laughs> oh, I'm hour, sure, I'm so. sure, and, and, and people are going to be begging for more. Yep. So, <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, this is a technical question; you may not have the answer to. But when you say that you started the uh, timer before, so if you have a nine thirty service and you're starting it at uh, nine twenty seven, how does that affect? Like, if you're doing Facebook Premiere and you start it early, then doesn't it um, show up? 
weird um, as far as like you can't say I'm starting at nine. Like once you put the time in, you have to put in either 927 or 930, right? Yeah, we, we actually will log it in as 927. You do? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, uh, and and just pay attention to that. Um, and, and we've noticed, so when the service then actually gets going, we've already got a whole group of audience members already dialed in versus yeah. waiting, you know, like, oh, they're live. And then it yeah. takes them two minutes to actually get in. And then they miss the first two minutes of the service. Yeah, I think that's great. I um, have been having discussion with a few church planners kind of navigating that and with the um, with the timer thing of just not going too long with that timer because uh, and I'm sure we'll talk about this in some of the future episodes that we have, but there's still a huge consumeristic culture. And if it's like you've got two minutes, you're, you're, your mind is all of a sudden clicking on other things, clicking on other services, clicking on shopping, and then and then you're late. I mean, it's funny that people can be late for service in, in the in when they're the sitting pandemic. on their couch. Yes, when there's <laughs> nothing to do. Um, yeah. So anyway, yeah, people are people, and Amazon and email have a way of getting in the way. There's no doubt. Yeah. Well, man, that that sounds great. Well, it sounds like you guys have been learning uh, learning quite a few uh, things. Any other? uh, things for this episode. Yeah. My, my biggest thing was I would just tell pastors, um, watch other churches out there that are doing it. Um, and just constantly pick up ways to, to improve, evaluate every week right now. Um, how did we do engaging people online? And uh, we've just noticed the more we dialed in, we are literally adding hundreds of viewers every week, the better we get. And, uh, and so we've seen our reach, expand enormously just in the last two months, um, you know, by maximizing the virtual experience. And so we're actually looking at this as a long-term game plan for how do we expand the church quickly into communities that we want to reach um, that really honestly don't have a relevant gospel-centered church in. And so I, I think we're looking at this as a long-term gift to the church versus being a detriment to the church. And so I would encourage all the, the pastors out there to think that and just learn from other guys that are doing it and see what they're doing and, and try to implement it your best as well. Well, friends, it, this has been a fun conversation, just talking about lessons learned uh, during the, the COVID pandemic. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in to the Unfiltered podcast where we're just having real conversations about church planting and church issues. Again, my name's Lee and my co-host here, Danny. We're glad to have you. And until next time, keep it real. 